What is up everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade here in the month of October in 2019. And as you guys saw in the title, there is one thing right now that's happening on Thursday, a big event that could potentially affect the stock market either negatively or positively. I think this event is going to bring a lot of volatility to the markets, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know what this event is, but if you don't know, I'll be talking about it here in a couple of minutes. So if you guys enjoy this video, if you find value in this video throughout the course of the video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and feel free to join our 100% free of charge Discord group chat and Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. So guys, let's get started with the SPX, the 500 largest publicly traded US companies, which ended up closing the day down today, 13 points down 0.45%. If we zoom out a bit to this 184 hour chart, you guys can see that we're trending under moving averages still. This can technically be a lower high point where we may see some further downside now because we didn't break out of this 180 SMA, which is the 180 simple moving average, this yellow line. So the fact that we did struggle here today if we go back to that one day, one minute, you guys can see we were kind of hovering flat the entire day, right? We gapped down this morning, we ran up, but you guys can see there's a general area of resistance at around 2955, 2960, right? We tested that level in the first two, three hours of the market, right? We dumped from there, we popped up again, we hit a higher high, this was looking good for the bulls, but ultimately we ended up closing the day on a huge downswing. The S&P went from 2960 all the way down to about 2938 at the close, and that is a swing of around 22 points. So the market definitely collapsed a little bit here in the last two hours of the session. And what did that do? If we go back to that four hour chart again, again, that confirmed our rejection under that 180 SMA, which is very, very good for my theory of this overall head and shoulder trend that I am noticing here on the SPX on the four hour chart and honestly on the other markets as well being the Dow and the NASDAQ, right? You guys can see it here, the left shoulder, the right or rather the head, and then this could be the right shoulder, and again, we got a very good confirming factor of the rejection today, which if we do dump and let's say break 2920 and get down to the 2800s, this is going to be the start of the completion of the right shoulder, which is obviously bearish because if we start to complete this right shoulder, guys, we're going to be going down into levels that we haven't been at over the past couple of weeks, and again, the first level I'm seeing here is 2920. 20, if we break that, 2880 is another one here that we actually tested a couple of days ago. We, we actually ended up holding that. That's a good sign, right? If we break that, 2850 and so forth, right? If we get down to these levels, you guys see some major support levels are 2730 as well as 2810 on the S&P 500. So keep an eye on that overall trend here that is the head and shoulder that I am seeing starting to form out here on the S&P. And again, you'll see it on the Dow and the NASDAQ as I pull up those charts next. And you guys can see here, despite on, you know, on the one hour chart, despite us breaking above that 50 SMA, Overall, we're trending below that 180 SMA, and it seems like we failed to break out of it today. So that's giving me a confirmation that this level is acting as a resistance. So overall here, guys, honestly, on the S&P, I'm seeing this looking pretty bearish, right? Especially with this event coming up on Thursday. If this doesn't go so well, if things turn sour, this market can drop in the snap of a finger, which we've seen it happen before in terms 
terms of, you know, events like this going sour, things not working out, and I know you guys know what I'm talking about. For those of you guys that do know what I'm talking about, right? So just keep an eye on that potential sell-off on the SPX. The close today did not look too good for, for the bulls, right? If we pull up the Dow Jones Industrial Average here, guys, down 95 points today, down 0.36% here, and you guys can see the overall trend very similar to the SPX, right? We got this left shoulder, we got the head, and now we're in the completion phase. We're beginning the, the completion phase of this right shoulder in terms of the head and shoulders pattern, right? Overall, on the four-hour chart, on the Dow, we're getting rejected by the 180 SMA, right? We struggled to break out of this very prominent resistance level being around 26,600 today, which happens to be a resistance from back in the middle of April to the beginning of May in 2019, right? You guys saw this level. We got rejected at this point a couple of months ago, and then we saw that massive correction. So the fact that we are getting rejected there again, that gives me really the belief that we might be selling off here to the next support, which on the Dow is at around 26,200. So keep an eye on that level. We may be selling off, right? If we zoom in a bit to the 20-day, one hour, you can see we're still on a downtrend, right? Although we broke the 50 SMA, very similar to the SPX on the one-hour chart, we're still trending below the 180 SMA, guys, right? We're still at a lower high from here. And again, we broke a critical, or rather, we failed to break a critical resistance, which is not good for the bulls out there, right? And if we go to the one day, one minute, you can see kind of flat during this time period. We gapped down, we popped up, we really weren't doing anything in terms of overall, um, you know, gain or loss in the Dow or the S&P rather in the NASDAQ and then again we sold off pretty aggressively in the last two hours of the market if we go to the NQ right now this is saying it's up three points but then again you guys know this is the future right so let me pull up my Yahoo Finance app very quickly um, just to see what the, the NASDAQ ended up doing today ended up going down 26 points down 0.33% right so you guys can see here on the one day, one minute, we were pretty flat in terms of before the market here. We started to see a surge as the market opened. We peaked at around 77, really 7,800 there. And the last two, two and a half hours, the market took a hit from 7,800 all the way down to about 7,740. That being a drop of around 60 points. That's probably around a half a percent drop in about two, two and a half hours um, in terms of the NASDAQ here, right? And if we zoom out to the 184, Four hour, you can see very clear that this is a head and shoulder pattern on the NQ. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder is in the completion phase right now. It's beginning the completion phase if it does end up dumping below 7,700, which in this case, guys, is a very prominent level of support, right? Notice how you know, this is an old resistance from where we actually triple topped about a, uh, two, two and a half months ago, more like two months ago at this point, right? You guys see the triple top here, and then we broke out of that triple top resistance, making it a support, and that is where we're holding right now at the close of the market. So this is a massive dump, guys, and take a look. This is insane, right? I drew these candlesticks out or not candlesticks, these trend lines literally a week, a week and a half ago. I have not touched these trend lines here, and the market has played out 100% to this trend line. These trend lines that, I, that I've that i drawn out, drawn, or uh, what's the word, drawn out. Oh my God, guys, I'm messing up my English here. It's insane. You guys see the pull down. We held 7,500 like I was expecting, right? Because at this point, we got very oversold. This was, about, uh, you know, near a level of support that was very prominent a couple of weeks ago we ended up holding that support we saw the retracement back up we saw the breather right from that oversold state now the RSI is getting a bit more healthy and we see I pretty much predicted that with my trend line drawing here and now we're seeing the resistance under that 180 SMA guys so let's see if this next dump here 
ends up playing out, right? So if this ends up playing out, we end up dumping below 7570, which again is that prominent level of support. This is going to be on its way to complete that right shoulder and ultimately maybe get down to the 7200 level, which we were at during that May sell off in the stock market. So overall, guys, that's what the markets are looking like right now, guys. You know, we saw a bit of a red day today. You know, a lot of the markets are looking like they're going to sell off more based on the technicals that we discussed and i just honestly love to know what you guys have to think about that down below in the comment section what are your thoughts on the markets are you long right now holding any swing positions are you day trading in this market are you waiting to see what happens in these next couple of days as things pan out let me know down below in the comments i would love to know so what did i do in the markets today let's get into that so if you guys watched my video yesterday on sunday and by the way for those of you new viewers out there every sunday I make a video where I go over the top stocks and ETFs I'm watching for the upcoming week and I kind of outline my plan for that week what are my thoughts entering into that week so subscribe to the channel if you guys do want to see that type of content but I was talking about how crude oil was at a level of support and I was also talking about Procter & Gamble being in that stock as a swing position from this previous Friday. So let's talk about those two very, very quickly here. So UWT is what I ended up trading today. Nothing crazy here, guys, to be completely honest. But you can see here on crude oil, this is what I talked about in yesterday's video, right? Crude oil is at a level of support where we double bottomed back in the June month of 2019, right? We double bottomed here at 52 and we ran up all the way to 60 bucks, right? We sold off all the way back down to that level of support back in the beginning of August and we rallied all the way back up to 56 bucks, right? We rallied up to 63 after that as we got that Saudi Arabia news, right? You guys all remember that. The price of oil went crazy. And now we st we're starting to see the retracement a bit from that ridiculous price hike in oil. And what are we doing again, guys? We are holding that $52 level of support and we're slowly starting to climb, right? That's what I noticed in yesterday's video. That's what I talked about in yesterday's video. And if you guys go to the one day, one minute on crude oil, take a look this morning at 4 a.m now this is way before the market opened on the east coast here crude oil was running up pretty much all the way to 11 a.m eastern standard time and went to 54 bucks and then it dumped pretty much this time period right here from the market open up to 11 o'clock that is when i saw action in UWT. And again, not crazy move here, guys. This is probably one of my smaller moves. But if we go to the 180, or actually, let's go to the 20 day chart very quickly. You guys can see we actually gapped up above the 50 SMA today. That was actually a good sign, in my opinion, because this level was a resistance over the past couple of trading days. So the fact that we did break out of it, that gave me a sign okay, this one might fill up to the next resistance, which in this case is the 180 SMA. It didn't come completely fill up to there, but the fact that we actually pulled down and held the 50 SMA as a support, that gives me signs that we might actually fill up either tomorrow or the next day, maybe the end of this week, up to this level of the 180 SMA or even higher, right? Because we can see we pull down again, we're holding it into the close here being that 50 SMA. And from where we are now, that's about a 12%. But anyway, what did I do today, guys? You can see on the one day, one minute, we pulled down, held the high or low from the previous in terms of um, you know the price action here and then we broke out right as we started to break out here crude oil again if I pull that up it was breaking out as well so this just gave me the opportunity to hop in. I saw this. I saw the break above moving averages. I saw how this was the continuation of the uptrend since it was holding a higher low. And I ended up taking a little position in UWT, right? UWT, this one was doing good right around here as we started to break up. And I started to trade it into this level here, 995. I started to buy into the 10s. Then ultimately, guys, I sold at the peak here at about 1008. This is one of those 
use that. I got in a bit late, I'll be honest. The perfect entry would have been down here at about 978, but we can't time the markets, guys. We can't time the absolute bottom. That's just the truth, right? So I waited for it to bottom out. I waited for it to break those moving average resistances, for it to pull down and hold those resistances as supports. And I, I again, I entered into the tens here, you know, 995 into the tens. That's where I started to build it. That's where I felt comfortable. And again, I sold it very quickly because the trend it was just popping up at that point. The RSI was getting oversold. I figured lock profits, and that's what I did, right? That's what I did pretty much from 999 up to where I sold. It wasn't, I think it was like under 1% profit. It was like a 0 0.8, um, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, something like that. Nonetheless, it wasn't one of my biggest gains, but I'll take it, guys. I'm happy with that. Profit is profit in my eyes. That is a green day in the books, and can't complain, right? The other trade that I'm currently involved in is Procter & Gamble, right? Procter & Gamble saw a bit of a pull down today. We can see that this could potentially be a head and shoulder, right? But I do feel confident here in holding it as a swing because if we go to the five day five minute overall here the trend that I'm seeing is still pushing up right and I got in a little bit late in the day on Friday and I'm actually down a bit on my position right now but again I'm being fully transparent with you guys I'm holding Procter and Gamble and I am again seeing a bit of a head and shoulders here which could be a bit worrisome right if the markets dump tomorrow maybe we start to push down down on PG, you know, if it does affect uh, PG in terms of the market's drop, you know, I might cut my losses if this ends up happening, right? But then again, PG, like I've been talking about on the channel, it's one of these value stocks that a lot of people flock into as growth stocks are falling, as markets, you know, the overall markets are seeing a lot of pressure, right? So this could end up being one of those that does well if the markets do take a hit. But let's say the markets take a drastic hit. We've seen them take massive hits before it'll probably hit PG as well because massive, massive hits, and I'm talking massive hits, and we've seen massive hits this year of like 3 4% in a day, right? If I'm if I'm remembering correctly, you know, if we get one of those days, sure, PG might be affected. But let's say we get an overall red day in the markets of 0.5% or something like that, like we got today, sometimes PG would be green in that particular circumstance. Today, it was red. It was one of those days where it did go red as the market's go red, but a lot of the times it's actually green, believe it or not, when the markets are in the slight red or whatever it may be, right? So PG... I'm in this one. I plan on holding it till the next higher high, right? Whether that's 126, 127, and I am a little bit down on the position, but that is okay. We'll see how that ends up panning out here in the next couple of days. So that event that is on Thursday, guys, that could affect the stock market is the U.S. and China trade negotiations. You know, they're pretty much meeting in Washington to discuss trade, right? And I have this picture on my phone that I want to read from you guys, and it's pretty much a screenshot from this article that I saw. I think it was on CNBC or something. And let me just read this out, uh, this excerpt for you from this article. So trade delegations from both the U.S. and China are scheduled to meet in Washington on Thursday. However, senior Chinese officials have recently signaled reluctance to work toward President Donald Trump's broad trade deal, according to Bloomberg news. Chinese Vice Premier Liu He is expected to lead the Chinese trade delegation in Washington this week, and he is reportedly planning to take one of Trump's key demands off the table, right? Whatever that may be, right? We don't have details on that from my research, but he's planning on taking one of Trump's key demands off the table. That's pretty huge, right? We all know how Trump is into negotiating and deals, so this could be pretty rocky, right? If the U.S. doesn't like this, this can end up being rocky, causing more tension in in the trade deals, that is if this news is true, right? This could be 100% false for all we know. But anyway, according to reports, Lou plans to bring a trade offer to the U.S. that excludes commitments on reforming Chinese industrial policy or government subsidies. So overall, guys, this is something that is 
my in my opinion the biggest strain on the stock market right now being that trade war being the trade war between the United States and China right this has caused the most drops in the stock market for my you know, you know, from my experience in the past year or two in the markets that I've seen from any other thing that we've been that, that, that we've been, you know, experiencing, right? It's caused a lot of massive sell-offs. It's caused a lot of panic, especially as the trade frustrations have been put on Twitter, on the media, in the media, in the news. It's in our faces. It's giving us a lot of uncertainty. You know, this has been a big strain on the stock market. So Overall, I'm watching this and I'm looking to see specifically how are the markets reacting? How is this negotiation going? Is are people getting ticked off? Is it being, you know, publicized on the media? Is Trump tweeting stuff like this and it can get bad in in in, in a second, guys. We've seen things tweet out, new tariffs being slapped on, you know, tariffs rolling in that were already slapped on, and this causes a lot of strain and uncertainty on the stock market. So these are just some things that I'm personally watching, guys, and the event on Thursday is the trade negotiations in Washington, so keep an eye on that. So a couple of stocks, very quickly before we do end off this video, a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now include, obviously, Procter & Gamble. We don't have to break that one down. Obviously, UWT, as we are seeing massive support on crude oil, and again, UWT goes up whenever crude oil is going up. We're also, I'm also watching... You know, Johnson & Johnson, we're seeing some resistance under 133, as I did expect, because we were getting oversold here on the RSI. We may be pulling down here to 132, which could be an entry point on Johnson & Johnson on top of that old resistance. That is, if it does end up holding it as a support level, this could be a very nice dip by entry, either to trade it up to 133, which if we look on a profit potential, that's about 1.4%. Let's say we break out we go to 135 that's around three percent that is interesting in my opinion um what are some other ones guys off the top of my head here we saw d gas today and i talked about this one in yesterday's video too i believe d gas up seven dollars up 5.4 percent and d gas goes up whenever excuse me, natural gas is going down in price. And natural gas, guys, for those of you guys that don't know, it's been getting killed recently. From 270, this peak that we saw in the middle of September, down to right now, we're at $2.23. Overall, we're getting rejected by this 50 SMA, which has been a resistance over the past couple of weeks. Now we're fiddling with the 230 level of support, and right now we're trending below it. So this is not good for the bulls out there. In my opinion, you know, this one's going to go down strictly based off technicals here down to $2.20, right? Again, we're getting rejected here. We're breaking below the, the, the main support. This can be our start to the lower low, which again, if we get to 220, that would be the completion of the lower low. Then from there, we may see another breather back up to that 50 SMA. That could definitely happen there. But overall here, I'm seeing DGAS as a good play, especially in the short term as natural gas has a lot more down downwards pressure. Another one that I'm watching is going to be gold, guys. Gold right now seems like it's it's forming a head and shoulder pattern of its own. If we zoom in a bit here, you can see left shoulder, head, right shoulder. It kind of already completed. Now we're fighting to pop up again, but ultimately we're still downtrending lower high right here under the 180 SMA. It's a clear rejection. We're on our way to that lower low now, especially if we break 1495, which is a level of support that we actually broke below a couple of days ago towards the end of September. So JDST, guys, is one that I'm watching, which goes up whenever gold is going down and whenever GDX is going down, right? GDX is this gold ETF. You can see head and shoulder of its own as well. We're seeing a rejection under that 50 SMA. This could be pushing to a lower low any second now, guys. And again, when that happens, JDST is going up. JDST goes up three times what GDX is is going down, meaning let's say GDX is down 2%, gold is getting crushed that day, JDST is going to be up 6% because it goes up three times what gold is going down. So those are some that I'm personally watching right now. Drop your watch list down below. 
in the comments section. I'd love to know what you guys are personally watching. And that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, again, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group. All of those are linked down below. My personal inst Instagram as well. Join that. I'm going to be doing a giveaway here in the next couple of weeks that you definitely want to be a part of. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.